Hi again YouTube, it's that one guy in lit class, and this video is a continuation of a series on diagramming. Now in the last video I talked about the basics of diagramming and how to diagram nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. So if you need to see that or if you need a refresher, please click this annotation. This video will cover diagramming direct and indirect objects as well as prepositional phrases. Before we start, let's give a brief review of what direct and indirect objects are. In English, a direct object is the noun or pronoun that receives the action of a verb. An indirect object indicates to whom or for whom the action in the sentence is done. So for example, in the sentence, I gave Bob the hamburger, the hamburger is a direct object. It is being given. So we say it quote unquote receives the verb. And Bob is our indirect object. The hamburger is being given to Bob. It answers to whom or for whom the hamburger is given. The easy way to remember the difference when you're diagramming is that direct objects answer who or what the verb is being done to, and indirect objects answer to whom or for whom the verb is being done. Also, remember that you can't have an indirect object without a direct object, but you can have a direct object without an indirect object. To diagram a sentence with a direct object, we'll start by identifying the subject and verb and writing them in their appropriate spots. The sentence we'll start with is Bob thanks Tom. In this sentence, we identify the subject, Bob, as the doer of the verb thanks. We can ask ourselves who is being thanked to find our direct object, which is Tom. We diagram the subject and verb as per usual, and then the direct object is diagrammed behind a vertical line that comes after the verb, like this. This serves to emphasize the fact that the direct object is receiving the action of the verb. Now let's look at diagramming an indirect object. An indirect object is always diagrammed with a direct object because you can't have a sentence with an indirect object that doesn't have a direct object. Our example sentence will be, I gave Tom the papers. We start by identifying the subject and verb, which in this case are I and gave, respectively. We can then ask ourselves who or what I gave to find our direct object, which in this case is papers. We can now ask ourselves to whom or for whom I am giving the papers, which gives us the indirect object, Tom. The indirect object is diagrammed on a line that comes down from the verb of the sentence. It is typically written horizontally to distinguish it from adverbs. So far, what we found looks like this. The only other word in the sentence is the, and in the last video I mentioned how the is an adjective. In this example, it's describing papers, so we'll diagram it as an adjective describing papers, which looks like this. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is the prepositional phrase. As the name suggests, a prepositional phrase starts with a preposition. In English, prepositions are words that show how two nouns are connected in time and or space. They're words like above, below, during, for, inside, to, until, and so on. A prepositional phrase always starts with a preposition and ends with a noun, which is called the object of the preposition. The vast majority of prepositional phrases are modifying either a noun, a verb, or another prepositional phrase. There are a few exceptions, but they are rare enough that I'm not going to cover them here. To diagram a prepositional phrase, draw a diagonal line from the word the phrase is modifying, and then attach a horizontal line to that. The preposition is always written along that diagonal line, and the object of the preposition is always written on the horizontal. Sometimes a phrase will contain one or more adjectives, which are diagrammed as coming off of the object. For example, in the sentence, the car for the extravagant buyer is the all-new schwanky schwankmobile, the prepositional phrase is for the extravagant buyer. For is the preposition, buyer is the object, and the other words are adjectives modifying buyer, telling us what kind of buyer. The phrase as a whole modifies the noun car, so we diagram it as coming off of car. The whole sentence looks something like this. While we're talking about it, let's take a look at the diagonal line that the preposition is on. In diagramming, it's common to leave a little tail at the end of that diagonal line, rather than making it flush with the horizontal one, though some sources will tell you that it's not necessary. I prefer to use it because it makes the prepositional phrase diagramming distinct from the indirect object and some of the verbals that we'll see next video. So, that sentence is an example of a prepositional phrase modifying a noun. It is possible for a phrase to modify other nouns in the sentence, though. For example, a direct object. They're still diagrammed the same way, just coming from a different noun. So in the sentence, I gave the papers to Tom, we can identify the subject, I, the verb gave, and a direct object, papers. We then have the prepositional phrase to Tom, which tells us who we gave the papers to. So we'll diagram it under papers. Now, the tricky thing about this is that it's very easy to mistake that prepositional phrase as an indirect object, because it's essentially functioning as one. I mean, if the definition of an indirect object is that it answers to or for whom the verb is being done, then one would think that including those words, to or for, in the sentence is a pretty dead giveaway. But unfortunately, it's not that simple. 
In diagramming, being the object of a prepositional phrase trumps being an indirect object. So we diagram this as a prepositional phrase, not as an indirect object. So keep an eye out because the words to and for are prepositions, and it's very easy to miss them and think that you've found an indirect object instead. For example, look at the sentence earlier in the video that was almost exactly like this one. All the words are the same except that preposition to wasn't in that first sentence. Alright, so now let's look at a phrase modifying a verb. I am tanning on the beach. As per usual, we identify our subject and verb. In this case, the verb contains both a helping and main verb, but they go on the same line. On the beach tells me where I am tanning, so we diagram it coming off of tanning. The article the is modifying beach, so we'll be sure to put that in as well. Alright, final thing. If a prepositional phrase modifies another prepositional phrase, you diagram the first phrase like usual, modifying either a noun or a verb, and then diagram the second phrase coming off of the object of that first phrase. Our example sentence is something like, He hit the ball into the river by the trees. I want you to see if you can diagram this one first without me, so pause the video now and try it, and then skip ahead to see if you got it. Did you get it? Hopefully, now you understand the basics of diagramming direct objects, indirect objects, and prepositional phrases. Next video will cover the three verbals. As always, leave comments and questions below. Cheers.